Hi, I'm Katie Toma, President and CEO of the Chico Chamber. And today I am here with my good friend, Colleen Cecil from View County Farm Bureau. And the reason why I invited Colleen here today is as a representative of the ag industry for Butte County. And amidst COVID, there really is a lot of positive news out there um, as it relates to COVID and, and agriculture. So I asked Colleen today if she would give us a report on what's been happening um, during COVID season, as I call it, um, and just how things are going and some of the challenges and with the industry, but also that um, you know the crops keep growing. So Colleen, thanks for joining me today. Well, thank you for asking, Katie. I'm, I was honored to be asked and was looking forward to this and your invitation. Great. So, so we talked a little bit earlier about some of the challenges of, um, or just some of the changes that you're seeing in Butte County as far as kids being home and um, working on the farm. So can you share with, with, um, with us about that? Yeah, so, um, you know, we are fortunate in Butte County uh, to um, have an incredible agricultural community and industry that is the foundation of our uh, local economy. And so when this whole thing started, um, you know, it was 100% critical that we be able to continue doing what we're doing, and that's farming, to not only feed our community, but, but to feed the world. California is, is essential, and I, I know we probably overuse that word right now, but it's true. We are essential when it comes to feeding people. And so, um, yeah, since day one, agriculture has been working. We've been farming. Um, you know, this whole thing blew up in March, and uh, that is what is typically what we call spring work in the area. A lot of the rice planting going on and getting the orchards prepared uh, as the crops grow on them. Uh, Butte County has a $700 million um, agricultural economy, um, and you can multiply that by two or three or four and take into consideration um, what is put back into the economy. Um, uh, in terms of in employees and um, additional um, sales and transportation, of course, in the, in the county. So it was 100% critical that, that we continue to work. But what became a challenge when the coronavirus pandemic first took off was the shutdown and um, the a number of people that were not in a position to come to work for one reason or another. Uh, and so um, for the most part, um, people have been able to keep their springtime employees. It's as we get into harvest where, and we can talk about that later, but we, we become more challenged. Um, but what we did find, if you'll, if a silver lining, if you will, is that with kids home and learning from home, they could learn at home and farm at home. And so um, for those, you know, farms and ranches and, you know, the the mo most all of our Butte County farms and ranches are, are owned by a family. We saw a lot of kids in tractors this year farming. Um, and so that has been, um, you know, again, a wonderful silver lining is that hopefully we're putting that next generation in a position where they want to be on the farms and ranch later on. And hopefully we can continue to move the economy in a place that the farms and ranches will be there later on. That's always um, a struggle and concern um, as we farm in the state of California. Well, that's that's exciting and kind of an, an unintentional unintention or in an unintentional consequence of of being home that having these kids in tractors and helping out on the farm. So, um, so on the farm with the the especially with nuts, uh, tree nuts being exported. What are some of the challenges that are facing farmers and um, distributors with getting our product um, across the ocean or across the country? Well, I, I believe that what we learned at the end of, let me step back. So we, we harvest every um, fall here. So in late summer, fall. So August, September, October. And so tree nuts, for example, and, and rice too, for that matter, are shelf stable crops. And so we can hold them and sell them all year long. Um, so the way that processors operate is they create contracts, um, you know, for 
you know, one, one order of nuts for whatever distributor, or maybe it's 12 orders, or maybe it's four orders, and, and it's over a 12 month period. And so um, when the pandemic hit, we were, we were obviously well into marketing the 2019 crop. And so we saw some contracts canceled, we saw some um, we saw some orders get on ships to move across um, the world, um, you know, and, and that takes weeks to get to their destination sometimes and something would leave the United States and leave California and get to its destination and no longer be needed by the person um, that had ordered it. And so that, that was a struggle where we saw crops, sales lost, and that impacts everybody in the ag community. Um, and so now we're concerned about the crop that isn't even off the tree yet and how will the market react. Um, there is movement throughout the world, so that is good, um, that, uh, but, it, but it's still uncertain as to what crop prices are obviously going to be once the new crop uh, comes off the trees, almonds, walnuts, and then when rice comes out of the field. So we continue to monitor, monitor those situations. Um, we also continue to monitor uh, the programs that USDA has put in place that has lent some support um, to um, most all of our, our crops here in Butte County, um, whether you're a cattle rancher um, or you're an almond grower or you're growing mandarins, there's a, a, some piece of some program uh, from the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program at a USDA that people have been able to take advantage of. Well, that's good because I know initially there wasn't any support for ag when the PPP loans first came out that they weren't included until the first, second go around. Yeah, we were included in the second go around. A lot of people took advantage of that and I'm, I'm glad that they did because that continues to keep people working and keep people um, moving forward. Um, and so between the PPP, uh, the EIDL, um, and then the CFAP or the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, which is directly tied to sales of commodities. Um, there are options there that are helping ag businesses um, continue to move forward in uncertain times. So because people have to eat and um, the farmers are still farming, then the, agribus the agribusinesses, so pump companies and equipment suppliers and fuel and truckers, they continue to work? Um, no, no layoffs in that area? Well, I, you know, I can't speak to those businesses. I mean, you have to have to speak to them for sure, but definitely those um, support uh, businesses for agriculture um, are continuing to be supportive to the ability that they can. Um, you know, you can say that that's where those uh, those funds uh, from the federal programs are going back is to continue to operate and continue to farm and continue to pay employees. So if employees are being paid, projects are still being done, um, people are still working and families are still have money for food to put on their table. So um, it definitely starts at the farm and works its way up and benefits the entire community. So um, from that respect, I think that Butte County is, is better than most because we do have a large agricultural industry that has continued to work um, from day one. That's not, not to say that there isn't a lot of people out there who are currently struggling because of the current shutdown situation, um, but it, it is good for a portion of our community um, and there are jobs. There are plenty of jobs in agriculture, especially as we move into harvest. And so people should um, consider those. Some of them are, um, some of them are long term. Some of them are short term. Some of them are full time. Some of them are part time. Um, but there are plenty of jobs, especially as we get into harvest in Butte County, that farms and ranches will be. Um, hiring for. So um, men and women alike, there's something to be done by everybody. So if you know somebody that's uh, looking for a job right now, uh, they could, should consider the ag industry. That's terrific. Well, I know that you guys have a great um, social media presence. Um, Butte County Farm Bureau has been really good on Facebook and, um, and also your website is current. So if people want additional information on what's happening in the ag industry, I would encourage them to like your Facebook page. Um, your, you and your team do a great job. So um, thanks, for, thanks for taking the time today, Colleen. I think that um, what a positive report to hear um, that things are going well for the Butte County farmers. And um, we will hope and pray for an awesome harvest. We do hope and pray for an awesome harvest. If you go to our, our Facebook page, our Twitter feed, or our Instagram, you'll find us at uh, Butte Farm Bureau. 
um, or Butte County Farm Bureau, depends on where you're at. Um, we put together a campaign in Butte County called Still Farming. It's a hashtag, hashtag Still Farming. Uh, it's been widely used across agriculture, but we are we gave all of our Butte County Farm Bureau members a Still Farming decal. We're encouraging them to put them on their trucks and their tractors and um, build some energy and some enthusiasm uh, around um, around our industry and around the people that are doing the work um, who are going out every day and, and getting it done to put food on their tables, but on the food of tables across the country. So thank you for the opportunity and, and the shout out to our social media. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you all in person soon. <laughs> yes, let's hope so. All right, take care. Thanks, Katie. See ya, bye.